Namaste. Another way of greeting in Sanskrit is Harihi Om. Welcome once again to this course on Introduction to Basic Spoken Sanskrit. In our previous lesson, we looked at how to count in Sanskrit. Today, we are going to apply those numbers in our different nouns and pronouns. So today, the uh, lesson that we are going to cover is lecture number 8 and the subject is the plural of pronouns and nouns. The objectives of the course are the following. To learn the plural of certain nouns and pronouns for the three genders in the subject form, technically known as the nominative case or the prathama vibhakti. The second part would be to learn the plural of the verb to be in the present tense for those pronouns. And finally, uh, to learn how to ask the question as well as answer it, uh, the question is how many? So first let's start with the plural of nouns and pronouns in the masculine. So we have chasha kaha, chasha kaha. Now we have many glasses here. Ekam, dve, trini, chatwari, pancha. Okay. So we have chashakaha, chashakaha, chashakaha. Similarly, chamasaha becomes chamasaha. Great. Now let's look at some words and see how they are written. So we have chashakaha, chashakaha. Now will you try chamasaha, chamasaha. Very good. Purushaha, Purushaha. Very good. Shikshakaha, Shikshakaha. Vrikshaha, tree, Vrikshaha. Margaha, Margaha. Naraha, Naraha. Balakaha, Balakaha. Janaha, Janaha. Chhatraha, Chhatraha. It's a nice open mouth with an aspirated sound at the end. Chhatraha. Apanaha, meaning shop, will be apanaha. Deshaha, country, deshaha. Lovely. So, for this particular lesson, I have gone through all the words that we have on the uh, table here. But what I will do for the next ones is I will just leave them for you to find out for yourself because you will have a sample. And the best part of Sanskrit is that it really is like formulas. So, if you know the formula for one thing, no matter what that the numbers that would uh, follow or how you replace the different uh, letters A, B in that formula, they'll all behave in the same way. So once you learn the plural of the masculine words ending with a uh in the subject case, you will learn it for all times. And the beauty is the reassurance that we have is that you can be, you can know for sure that if there is a word that comes up with an a, a masculine in a thousand years to come, it will still be, uh, it will still take the same for plural forms as we have today. So if chashakaha is chashakaha, hundred years down the line, whichever word. So we have a modern gadget today which is uh, sanganakaha or the computer. Huh? So sanganakaha will become sanganakaha. Very good. So moving on, just let's look at that. Purushaha, purushaha. Naraha, Naraha. I'd really like you to open your jaws wide and exaggerate and also use the aspirated sound. So, Naraha. Right? Now, let's move on. Let's look at some pronouns that we've already visited earlier. So, we look at the pronouns for the first and the second person, uh, formal and informal, and see how they behave. So, we have Aham Purushaha. Now, for aham purushaha, for aham, the plural is vayam. Aham, 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 I, 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 many becomes we and that is vayam or vayam. So, aham becomes vayam. So, now let's combine it with the noun. It becomes aham purushaha will become aham purushaha, aham purushaha, aham purushaha becomes vayam purushaha. Vayam Purushaha. Once more, Vayam Purushaha. 
Similarly, aham bharatiya, as you can see the second word on the screen, will become ah, vayam bharatiya, vayam bharatiya, aham sanskrita priya. Very good. Now let us look at the U formal. So the, we had the word for masculine which is bhavan. So if you had many U's formal, it would be bhavan, 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 bhavantaha, bhavantaha. Say that bhavantaha. So bhavan gayakaha, bhavantaha gayakaha. Bhavantaha Gayakaha. Now, what you would notice is that as you are trying to put these words together, your mind has to do a lot of computing. And that is the aspect of Sanskrit that really makes the mind into a very sharp tool uh, to be able to analyze the world and categorize it. So, we have Bhavan Gayakaha, Bhavantaha Gayakaha. Because the word is bhavan, it is not an a ending uh, pronoun, it is a n halant. So, it is bhavan and therefore it will become bhavantaha. All right. So, that is something that we will not look at in depth in this uh, particular series of lectures because that is a little more advanced level. But what I will give you is uh, at least the basic ones with the masculine words ending with a. And we focus on the second part. So, bhavantaha gayakaha. Excellent. So, do it with bhavan sajjanaha, meaning a good person, will become bhavantaha sajjanaha. Excellent. Now, let us look at the next word, which is the informal you, uh, the second person is twam. So, twam, 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 twam becomes you yam. You yam. Say that. You yam. You see, there are certain similarities with the English also. We had with vayam, or the English has the we, and in Sanskrit it is vayam. In uh, now we have the word you yam to indicate plural second person, and we have the Sanskrit word which is you yam, and the English is the you. All right. So we have twam krida priyaha, you yam. Krida Priyaha. Now let us look at the words by themselves. So aham becomes vayam. Bhavan in the masculine uh, respect form for the second person will be bhavantaha in the plural. Thwam you in formal second person becomes you yam. Moving on, let us look at the third persons now. So, we have looked at the third persons in our previous sessions. Can you try and recollect what they were? If a man is standing far, it will be saha. If he is near, a shaha. And the question is kaha. So, let us see what happens to that now. So, saha, 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 saha. You have it there on the screen. It is te. What is the English? De. So, that is an easy way to remember that the plural for third person in the masculine is de huh? or te. It is not the the sound but the t. Okay? So, te. So, we have saha purushaha. Saha purushaha, saha purushaha, saha purushaha will become te purushaha. Will you try the next one? Saha bharatiyaha. Excellent. Te bharatiyaha. Saha Nataka Priyaha, one who loves drama. Te. Did you get it? Te Nataka Priyaha. Excellent. The next one, E Shaha Nayakaha, meaning actor. E Shaha Nayakaha. E Shaha, E Shaha, E Shaha, e shaha becomes E Te. And we know the plural for Nayakaha, it is Nayakaha. So, e shaha nayakaha, e te nayakaha. And then the question, kaha lekhakaha, kaha lekhakaha or the writer. So, kaha 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 becomes ke. 
if you look at the if you look at the words that we've already looked at we see that there is some kind of a pattern so saha becomes te eshaha becomes e te kaha becomes ke so we have ke lekhakaha which writers or who other writers ke lekhakaha etc so putting it together now for you saha te eshaha e te kaha ke now let's look at some nouns in the feminine so we have you remember sthalika meaning dish so let's get a few dishes together sthalika becomes sthalika ha sthalika sthalika ha very good <coughs> similarly kunchika kunchika ha bunch of keys kunchika kunchika ha now let's look at some words there so sthalika sthalika ha i would also recommend that you close your eyes and as i tell you the word see if you can just repeat it in your mind okay mala very good mala ha mahila shikshika petika petika ha very good churika churika ha balika balika ha vatika meaning garden vatika ha pathashala pathashala ha you're really getting a hang of it i'm sure by now <coughs> so a student female student is chhatra chhatra ha kunchika kunchika ha lata lata ha excellent uttamam now moving on we've got this word uh, with the ending with the e ha huh? so we have words ending with the e in the feminine so we have for example lekhani which means a pen and then you have a few more will be lekha not lekhanya ha because that means something else that we saw in our previous session of the genitive case so lekhani 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 lekhan nya ha Huh? i normally tend to do this with the fingers in order to just indicate to the body that it's a short vowel it's not a a ha huh? so it's lekhanya ha lekhani 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 lekhanya ha kupi very good kupya ha varna lekhani lovely ankani ankanya ha the phone duravani excellent duravani ha now let's look at some words quickly kupi duravani so close your eyes and just see if you go can go through the words i will not give you the answers because you can figure that out for yourself so just close your eyes and see if you can just listen to the logic and reproduce the word all right so nari naryya to start with lekhani ankani marjani which is an eraser nartaki a dancer putri daughter patni wife sahodari sister droni which means a bucket nadi the river very good so um uh, what i wanted to also indicate to you is the difference between the short sound and the long sound so here we have a pen ha huh? so lekhani 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 lekhanya i'll just show them to you so lekhani 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 lekhanya now if you have the long vowel it will be you remember the genitive it would be lekhanya nama ling lekhanya ha nama ling so link 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 lekhani 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 lekhanya ha got it great uttamam so now let's move on we'll just look at the words as we've seen them now so the feminine word ending with a like mahila becomes mahila ha the wo feminine word ending with e the long e like nari becomes 
Naryah. Uttamam. So we move on to here we have the plural of certain pronouns like we saw in the case of the masculine. Let us look at the cases in the feminine. Huh? So first we look at the first and second formal and informal persons and see what happens. So aham, 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 aham. Aham does not change irrespective of the, it is irrespective of the gender. So the plural of aham or eyes, the plural is we, will remain vayam. But the word that it is associated with, that would change. So for example, you have aham mahila and the plural would be vayam mahilaha. I have next taken a word ending with a long e. So if you have aham buddhimati, the plural will be vayam buddhimatyaha, uttamam. Moving on, bhavati is a word ending with a long e. So bhavati, 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 bhavati would be bhavatyaha. So now that is an easy one when it comes to uh, combining with the long e. So let us take the second case. So we have bhavati nartaki, the second word. And that is easy because both end with a long e. So it is bhavatyaha nartakyaha. Now what happens when you have a long sound? So bhavati gaika. Now the mind has to be very alert because you have to remember that the words ending with a get a different plural ending for the feminine case. So we have bhavatyaha gaikaha. So although it is a feminine word, because of the ending, the way it is um, declined with the plural is different. Okay. So keep that in mind. And then we have thwam. So again thwam does not vary with the gender. So thwam, thwam, thwam female will still remain you yum. But the word it is associated with will get, uh, will indicate to you whether it is a female word or feminine word or not. So we have thwam krida priya, a lady who loves sports. The plural will be you yum krida priyaha. And I also have put in you yam devyaha. So what would be the singular of that? Thwam devi. So that was a special exercise to see if you can remember what the singular is of that. Okay, Uttamam, let's move on. Let's look at the whole form. So aham vayam remains the same for masculine or for the feminine. Bhavan in becomes the bhavati and bhavantaha becomes bhavati for the female and thwam remains the same irrespective of the gender which is you yum. Now let us look at the plural of this of some pronouns. So again do you remember what the, plu, uh, the pronouns were for she who is far away? Yeah. So sa nearby, esha and the question is ka. There is a rhyme about it. Sa Esha ka. Now, just based on what you have done, the pattern that you have looked at earlier, do you have any guesses what sa, 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 sa would become? Yeah? Okay. So, like we had seen, the sa became te. Here, the sa will become ta. Ta. Huh? Similarly, the esha will become e ta. And the ka? Yes, kaha. Very good. Let's look at them. So we have sa mahila, taha mahilaha. Sa na sa mala. Do it. Very good. Sa nari, taha nariha. You remember what I mentioned that you have to pay attention to the ending of the words because that will indicate to you how it will be transformed. The next one we have is esha naika, which will become etaha naikaha. Esha duravani, etaha duravanyaha. Ka lekhika, lady writer, kaha lekhikaha. Great. And then kaha nadhyaha, which rivers? are there in India, Kaha Nadhyaha, 
uh, or uh, ka nadi, which river in the singular, in the plural becomes kaha nadyaha. Uttamam. Let's look at that now uh, as we have it here. So, sa becomes taha. Esha, etaha. Ka, kaha. Very good. Moving on. So, we have the neuter forms here. Now, what do you think that would become? Hmm? So, we have pushpam. Now, if you have many flowers, pushpam, 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 pushpani. Pushpam, 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 pushpani. Similarly, we have patram and we have a lot of papers. So, patrani, patram, patrani, karavyajanam. Karavyajanani. Great. Let's look at some words here. Phalam, 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 phalani. Pushpam. Exactly. Pushpani. Mitram. Mitrani. Very good. Chitram, chitram, chitram. Chitrani. Chalana chitram. Chalana chitrani. Patram, 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 patrani, vastram, vastrani. Remember where there is a r kind of sound that comes at the end, it will get a n sound, ok. So, griham, 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 uttamam, grihani, nagaram, nagarani, phenakam, so, did you say penakani or penakani? Okay, so the answer is penakani. Ah, it's a dental, not the cerebral sound. Vyajanam. Uttamam. Vyajanani. Dwaram, the door. Dwarani. Uttamam. Now, combining that with the pronouns again. So, in this case, there is no, um, uh, there is no first and second person because you can't have a pronoun for that uh, in the neuter gender. So, we have here the third person uh, pronouns. So, we have tat, 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 if you remember, tat, 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 tat will become tani, etat, etani and kim, 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 kim will be kani, got that? So let's look at it. Tat mitram tat mitram tat mitram becomes tani mitrani. So I just want to draw your attention again to the fact that we have a mitrani, the n which is there. Now that transformation of the simple dental n happens because the previous sound is a r, it's a murdhanya sound. So in the presence of a murdhanya sound preceding the n sound, the N sound undergoes a transformation and becomes a murdhanya na, na. So we have tani mitrani. So pushpam also has the presence of a murdhanya sha. So it will become pushpani. Great. Nagaram nagarani. Go back. Nagaram nagarani. Lovely. Moving on. Etat yanam, yanam is a ka, will become etani yanani, etani yanani, uttamam. The next one, question, kim griham, which house, kim griham, kani grihani, again, because of the r that is there, grihani. So, you would have noticed that in the yanani, there is no murdha uh, na, the nasal is not a murdha one because it is the regular form is the dental na. So, just bear that in mind uh, when you notice differences in the plural of the neuter gender sometimes. So, putting it together here for you, tat, tani, etat, etani, kim, kani. Now, we have looked at the nouns uh, that are in the masculine, feminine and the neuter. 
and we looked at the nouns in the masculine and the neuter ending with an a uh, and in the feminine that ended with the a uh and the e and we saw the transformations that the word undergo in the plural form. Now let's see what happens to the verb. So to start with I'll just look at in this session we'll just look at the verb to be. Okay. So we had asti. So chashakaha asti and then we have chashakaha santi. Did you get that? Asti santi. Sthalika asti. Sthalikaha santi. Uttamam. Lekhani asti. Lekhanyaha santi. Uttamam. Patram paper. Patram asti. Patrani santi. Very good. So let's look at that. Purushaha asti. Purushaha santi. Mahila asti. Mahilaha santi. Kupi asti. Kupyaha santi. Phalam asti. Phalani santi. You would have noticed that irrespective of the gender of the word, the verb asti remains, uh, becomes santi alone and nothing else. Now what happens in the negative case if you say is not there, so karyam or work, nasti, no work, huh? karyam nasti, there is not a lot of work, so karyani na santi, so the word na is added to indicate the negative. We have looked at the third person uh, in the plural for the verb asti, which became santi. Now look, let's look at the first person, the second formal and informal uh, and see what happens to the verb asti when we are conjugating it with these different persons. So in the first one we have asmi, aham asmi and we have the famous Upanishadic statement which says, which says Aham Brahma Asmi. Aham Brahma Asmi. So that when it becomes plural becomes Vayam Smaha. Vayam Smaha. And then we have with the formal uh, second person is Bhavan becomes Asti. So again you must notice that the second person formal is really conjugated like the third person singular or in the third person uh, for singular or plural. So bhavan asti in the plural will become bhavantaha santi. And then the second person informal which is thwam will be thwam asi. And that in the plural is yuyam. So yuyam becomes stha or yuyam takes the verb asti in the form of stha. So you yam stha, twam asi, you yam stha. Now let's look at a few examples. Aham mahila asmi, vayam mahilaha smaha. Now if you wanted to say aham gaika asmi, it will become uttamam, vayam gaikaha smaha. Now let's do something masculine. So if you had to say aham kridakaha asmi will become vayam kridakaha smaha uttamam. Now let's look at the second person formal. So bhavan purushaha asti bhavan 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 bhavantaha purushaha Santi Uttamam Bhavan Chatraha Asti will become Bhavantaha Chatraha Santi Uttamam. Now let's look at the feminine. So we have Bhavati Mahila Asti. So Bhavati 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 Bhavatyaha Bhavatyaha Mahilaha. Santi, bhavat 
It can be a little confusing to remember the E ending is different from the A ending of the feminine. But yet that's the very exercise for the mind, this alertness that, the, that one requires when one is uh, engaging with Sanskrit grammar and Sanskrit as a spoken language. So Bhavati Mahila Asti will become Bhavatyaha Mahilaha Santi Uttamam. Next, Thwam for the second person informal is Thwam Purushaha Asi will become Thwam 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 Yuyam Purushaha Stha. Again, Yuyam Purushaha Stha. Let's do it with another masculine word. Uh, thwam Shikshakaha, teacher. Thwam Shikshakaha. Asi, yuyam shikshakaha sthaha. Let's do it in the feminine uh, with the word Sanskrita Priya. Thvam Sanskrita Priya Asi, yuyam Sanskrita Priya sthaha. Uttamam. So now, moving on. We've learned how to count. We've learned the plural of things. A very important question that would follow is to ask how many of things are there. So, for example, you say chashakaha asti. The question, interestingly, is always in the plural, like in English also. How many glasses are there? Uh, so, the entire th question is formulated in the plural. So, kati chashakaha santi, ekaha chashakaha asti. Now, if you had many, so let's count them. Ekam, dwe, trini, chatwari, pancha, shat. So, totally we have shat, including the steel one. So, kati chashakaha santi, shat chashakaha santi. Again, shat chashakaha santi. Similarly, kati chamasaha santi, ekam. Dwe, Trini, Chatwari, Pancha. Kati, Chamasaha, Santi. Pancha, Chamasaha, Santi. Now, let's look at a few sentences. These are things from uh, tradition or general questions, uh, general knowledge questions that exist. So, we have Kati, Swaraha means how many notes are there? Swara is the word for the notes when we are talking about music. Kati, Swaraha, Santi. Vadatu? Sapta Swaraha Santi. Sapta sara Swaraha Santi. Uttamam. Similarly, Kati Vedaha Santi. Chatur Vedaha Santi. Chatur Vedaha Santi. Uttamam. So, I would just invite Piyush to come over and we'll just have a small chat about this question, Kati, just to get a feel of it. So, Namaste Piyush. Namaste. Sarvam kushalam kim? Kusalam sarvam. Uttamam. Tari, tatra pashyatu. Now, uh, kati grahaha santi? Naba grahaha santi. It says general knowledge exam today. So, kati grahaha santi? Naba grahaha santi. Uttamam. Kati pandavaha santi? Pancha pandavaha santi. Uttamam. Kati angulyaha Santi Dasa Angulya Santi Uttamam Astu Bahudanyavada I hope you have got a feel of how this can be applied in your daily context and uh, try and see if you can start using this more. I will also in the course of the following sessions start speaking to you a little more in Sanskrit even when I'm explaining it so that your ears get familiarized to listening to the sounds of the Sanskrit language. To close, like I always do, uh, there's a beautiful quote that I found by Sri Satyaranjan Banerjee and the quote is on the role of Sanskrit in modern India. It says, indeed the role of Sanskrit in modern India is very great. In the words of Max Muller, a people that can feel no pride in the past 
in its history and literature loses the mainstay of its national character when germany was in the very depths of its political degradation it turned to its ancient literature and drew hope for the future from the study of the past so if we have to look back very seriously at our past and at our heritage sanskrit would act as a very powerful master key to give us access to that vast treasure of knowledge that we have so take the study seriously practice as much as you can invite your friends to join you teach your neighbors teach as many people as you can the more the merrier and then we will all be able to maybe speak more sanskrit in this country some day dhanyavadah